Hey lovelies, it's me Tiffany and I'm back. I'm here to have a housewives discuss sesh with you. It's been way too long. So if you're new here, I'm Tiffany and this is my housewives discuss sesh. And um, I am three episodes behind on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So I caught up and took my notes because we're catching up today. That's right. We're doing three episodes in one discuss sesh. So um, anyways, if you're new here, I'm Tiffany. I like to discuss Real Housewives of, um, well, today's Beverly Hills. Sometimes it's New York, just depends. So just Real Housewives. And I also do my makeup while I talk about it. And if you wanna know any of the products I use on my face today, they're gonna be down below in the description box. So go ahead and check that out if you're wondering what products I am using. Um, and I'm going to be doing a few New York Housewives discuss sesh soon. Sorry, you can probably hear my little kitten in its litter box because well, my house is small and I have to just improvise with the space I have. So they are in my master bathroom. That's where the litter box is. And of course, one of them has to be in here because I'm in here. So sorry about that. It'll be okay though. <clears throat> Anywho, let's talk about the Real Housewives Beverly Hills. I'm gonna do New York Housewives too soon. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and do the follow button or subscribe, and then you'll be able to see it when it comes out. Anyhow, we're gonna get into the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Right now we're in season 11, and I'm gonna be doing episode six, seven, and eight today. So we're gonna start out with episode six, which is called The Liberation of Erica Jane. Let's start off by priming our face because why would you not prime your face? Come on, first face. Says so in the name. Oh yeah, prime that face, baby. Ooh, okay. So, liberation of Erica Jane. So the last time that I was, you know, doing a discuss sesh, I was on episode five. So we had left off with like everybody at Sutton's party talking about the whole um, Erica Jane, or why am I saying Erica Jane? Erica's divorce announcement. So everybody's talking about that. I'm gonna get my hair put back or else, you know, I'm gonna get in my way. We're gonna snooky it again. But remember, like I said, it is not gonna look as good as what Snooky used to do. But we're gonna be okay with it. Because it's not my face, so that's really the only purpose I need for it to serve right now. It actually kinda looks cute, don't you think? Okay, anyway, so we they were talking about how Erica had filed for um, divorce, or and all that and Erica just walks in the party and she everything's fine and like just walks in like it's all normal um Kathy and Kyle are talking at one point about how Kathy does shorthand talk and how Kyle went about describing it was just so funny how she imitated Kathy because so far that is exactly how Kathy does talk and I love her. She's like, I swear she is stealing the show this season. That's why Bravo held out on us. I'm convinced they knew how funny she was. So um, Erica apparently has a new Range Rover and um, goes on to say like how she gave up this house and the cars and all this stuff when she left Tom. Um, like she even had to include the square feet of the house that she left compared to the house she has now. Um, 
And then she says that, you know, she even had to give up her marriage. Okay, Erica. I'm gonna get into my thoughts about her. Just don't worry. But she uh, then like says to everybody that she thought that filing for it on election day was like, it would just be such stale news compared to the election that nobody would even be interested. How long has she been on Housewives now? Like, girl, you know. Let's see, it's been four, maybe five seasons now that Erica's been on. Like, you know that that was not gonna just go and fly under the radar and slip under the rug. Like, come on now. And Lisa Renna, of course, is just up Erica's ass. Like, she's just team Erica. Like, girl, just pump, pump the brakes. Just pump the brakes. Um... She, Erica goes on to talk about how she like straight took Tom to work, said goodbye, went to the house and just straight packed her, her shit up as she says. And she like left. I bet she did. Like I'm just picturing, have you, if you've ever watched the TV show Shit's Creek, which if you have not, you need to, it's hilarious. But I'm just picturing Shit's Creek where they're like, grabbing as much as they can now. Granted, the feds weren't with Erica when she was getting her stuff from Tom's, but I still picture it that way. Um, she said that she like barely grabbed, what she's saying, she barely grabbed anything, but you know. She did get a couch and a coffee table, or I don't know. She said something. Yeah, I think it was coffee table because she doesn't have a dining room too. Who, whatever. Um, then it's like Kyle. We go to Kyle and Dorit, who are like trying to patch things up for good. But to me, I'm like y'all are still frenemies. It just seems like the water is going to be calm for right now, but it's going to get murky again. They just do not come off as genuine friends. But then again with Dury, she seems so phony. It'd be hard to probably actually have a real friendship with her. She just seems pretentious to me, but whatever. So Garcelle is, Garcelle, our girl, She's out, she's looking for a man through a matchmaking service. And she's describing what her perfect man would be. And girl had me laughing so hard. She's like, you know, loyal, kind, um, all these other great characteristic characteristics. And then she was like, and not too big. <laughs> Cause there is such thing. Oh man, she had me laughing when I heard that. And even the matchmaker was like, not heard that one before. She probably hears the opposite. But I'm hoping that, you know, Garcelle, you, I hope you meet the man that's right for you. Everybody deserves that. Hopefully he checks off, you know, most of the things off that list too, girl. Um, do you guys see that Mikey Minden, Erica's, what is he, her creative director for Erica Jane or whatever. Um, so, he used to work with Robin Anton, like the creator of the Pussycat Dolls. And he used to, I think, choreograph and style the Pussycat Dolls. He did something like that. He was like pretty, pretty up there in the hierarchy with Pussycat Dolls. And I'm wondering, because... He left that to go work with Erica. So he must have had some sort of better incentives, opportunities, whatever the case may be, working with Erica for Erica, however you want to say it, as opposed to the Pussycat Dolls. But now I'm wondering how long he's gonna stay, just given the circumstances. Just curious. So he's there with her and um, helping her get settled into her house and all that, her new house and all that. I, 
Erica, girl, I'm not your, I'm not a fan of yours anymore, girl. I just gotta be honest. Used to be a huge Erica Jane fan. When she first came on, I was like, ooh, I love her. And it was like each season, I just seemed to have loved her more and more and more. But I'm not that big of a fan of hers as of lately. Especially because I really feel that she left Tom because everything was crumbling underneath him and she knew it. Because he was funneling money from his law firm into her um, business. The Erica Jane LLC or whatever it's called. Pretty Mess or whatever it is. So like this whole time she's trying to make it seem like it's her money basically like paying for it all and then it, it really this hobby of hers is like costing so much money that tom literally took money from victims and innocent people and he has funneled it into her business pretty sketch pretty sketch so anyways erica i think that her new house is cute i think it's a cute little house um, but I just, I just look at her so differently now because of what I know. Ignorance is bliss, friends. Ignorance is sometimes bliss. <sighs> at least I feel that way in this situation. Okay. So, um, I got, Kyle talked, um, Sutton into getting a mammogram. And I'm like thinking that is a good friend. Someone who cares enough about your health to have you go get a mammogram. I don't even care if they did it just to have a storyline for the damn show. I think it's great that they show that because it's so important for us ladies to do that, especially when we get older. We shouldn't be scared of it. We need to just go for it. Stay healthy. Okay. Let's talk about this whole Rena Beauty thing too. Um, how many of y'all are going out there to buy Rena Beauty? Because I'm just going to go out and say that I'm not probably going to. I mean, she'd have to have something really like cute that I can't get from somewhere else or... She's just not my person I think of when I think of glam. Yeah, she has big lips and all that. But I just don't think that I think of her when I think of like beauty industry or, you know. Mm. And I find it really convenient that she's gonna have a lip line now while her daughter is dating Scott Disick. Just saying. I mean, Kylie got the whole lip kit thing, like, homegirl got it taken off to what it is now. So, I just think it's interesting that all of a sudden now, Lisa Rinna is going to have a lip kit. And she looks like she's morphing into being, like, a Kardashian Jenner just saying. And her daughter, it also seems, looks like she is too, but. <sighs> I digress. So, anyhow, I'm not feeling, <sighs> I'm gonna feel like an asshole to say this, but if, if, you know, with Erica, like I'm feeling really indifferent about the whole, this whole, all this stuff that she's saying now about hers and Tom's marriage. You know, I don't, I don't know. I kind of feel this indifferent, like I said, about the way that she's saying it ended with her and Tom and all that. Because, I mean, he was probably feeling the burden of taking this money from his clients and trying to explain to them where it is and then trying to keep his wife's 
lifestyle accommodated to what she wants. And I mean, it, eventually it's gonna implode. And that's what happened. And it's hard for me to feel bad for her because like, she took money from it. She, she had to have known that, you know, he was doing that. And you know her comment about when someone said that like, you know, they he was a lucky man to be married to her and he talked about how expensive it is to have her. Um, yes. Like, nobody's gonna doubt that, Erica. You literally have a song called It's Expensive to Be Me. 40 grand a month in glam. You know, like, there's probably superstars out here that spend less money on their glam. So... That's just my, my little perception. Okay, so Crystal's having a dumpling party. And um, I was really interested to see the ladies put dumplings together because I thought it was gonna be a hot mess, but it really wasn't. Um, so Kyle, I guess, gave Erica, she comes to the party and she's talking about like how Kyle gave her some THC oil. Look a girl up, oh, Kyle. <laughs> I mean, TMI for what, like, her body was feeling, you know? But, I mean, it's pretty cool. Again, Kyle seems like she is a great friend, guys. I have no idea what I'm doing right now with my makeup. I'm just playing around with the palette that I got. Because why not? So I don't even know what look we're gonna end up with today. We're just gonna hope for the best. And again, please ignore my little kittens playing. <laughs> They're crazy. And Crystal talking about how she doesn't know why people are talking about the stuff that happened between her and Sutton in her room. Cause of course this is now like the new panty gate and puppy gate situation is this whole Sutton taking Crystal's jacket back to her and Crystal feels violated, blah, 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 blah. But Crystal's the one that keeps on talking about it to everybody. And then she's gonna be like, I don't know why everybody's talking about it. Because you haven't stopped talking about it, Crystal? And that's a thought. And they even like show her literally talking about it to other people. Cause, and uh, like Sutton, she's like telling Crystal, you know, to basically like just end this right now by saying that, you know, by one, not talking about it anymore. And by just like putting it to rest is all Sutton wanted Crystal to do. And, um, you know, because obviously it's turned into a bigger deal than what it really needs to be at this point between the two of them. And so much fallout. Ugh. Use our finger. Oh, the dumpling aprons were super cute. I thought that those were, I liked them. I thought those were sweet. Um... <clears throat> they were all talking about like dating again and stuff. And like, I bet that Erica probably, she probably has a, t a Tinder out there. She's probably got a little, I don't know. I don't know, cause she's kind of going through a lot right now with everything coming in on her with them wanting her to like give stuff back for um, them to have money to give to the victims and stuff. She's, she was trying to get out of it, but that's not going to happen. Um, okay, so now we're going to go into the uh, seventh episode, the next one. And um, 
It's called Defining Women. And it's like the next day after Crystal's, you know, dumpling party and Kyle is telling Crystal how much dumplings she ate and was like apologizing. And then they just show how much Kyle's just throwing them back. And I gotta say, I'd be doing the same thing, Kyle. <laughs> that would be me too at a, at a party if there was some good food. That, yeah. I've been known to do that too. Sometimes you just gotta indulge. Okay. So. <sighs> then Erica gets picked up by Sutton and you can just, you can tell that girl wishes that she had a Bentley. She's missing that good life. Mm -hmm. You could see it in her face. Um, I thought it was really cool that Sutton got a private, like the a spa to give her and Erica their own little spa day in private. So that was really super sweet of her to do. Um, and it was just really neat. Garcelle, her talking just like with her boys about wanting to date and stuff again. I love it. I love seeing it. I think it's great that they're um, showing that and that she really does seem to like listen to her boys and actually genuinely cares about what they feel. So I was really happy to see for them to show that and to see that side of her. I mean, I already like ourselves so much, but seeing her and just how she is with her kids. You can just tell she's such a good mom. Then we go and we see Erica's new range out there. Mm hmm girl. She's talking about how she's never had a Range Rover before and blah, blah, blah. Like, again, does she even think of the victim's families like watching this and <laughs> watching her live like this extravagant life and knowing that some of that is off of the dime that, you know, is owed to them. I mean, just saying. Um, and then Garcelle was saying that she had heard like talk that Tom had a um they would see would see him out with another woman that's like maybe in her sixties or something and Erica was basically like, Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I've heard it before. I just feel like she was going out of her way to make this man look awful. The whole dementia thing, though, is still weird to me because he never came off to me as that either. And I've been around people with dementia. So finally, we see Rena share the news about how Amelia is dating Scott Disick, which I'm sure most of you already know that prior to it. And it was nice, like, honestly, I thought that Rena was going to be, like, all for it. Like, oh my gosh, it's Scott Disick. Like, this is so great for our family. And I actually see that she was not that happy about it and not that, like, supportive of her 19-year-old daughter dating a 37-year-old man with three kids. I actually enjoyed seeing that because I didn't expect Rena to feel that way. Um... Yeah, I, 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 it's weird to me that Scott is with such a young girl, knowing that he has three kids, he's almost 40, like, you know, I thought the Sophia Richie thing was just odd, even when that happened, but I think this is even more strange to me, actually. I don't know why. Anyways. So we like see Kyle um, at home and with Portia cooking and oh my gosh, it is just crazy to see how much that girl has grown up. To know like we used to see her when she was just a little toddler on the be in the beginning of Beverly Hills. And now she is a little teenager. I mean, before you know it, we're gonna be seeing her go off to college and stuff. How crazy. 
My brushes are running off from me. Okay. But yeah, I loved seeing her at home, them at home with their girls and seeing Portia and Portia's relationship like with her sister, Sophia. It's just very sweet to see sisters that are close. I love seeing siblings that bond, don't we all? Okay. I think I'm finally done with my eyes. We're gonna put on some mascara now. Okay, um, Kathy doing her nails with like Crystal was cracking me up. She's like, I don't know if I should get those fake nails or. <laughs> she is such a riot. I love me some Kathy Hilton. And I know that other Bravo watchers and Beverly Hills fans are also loving her. I see the comments, so I know I'm not alone. Um, so her doing her nails, that was just funny to me. And when Rena asked if she should be calling Scott Disick friggin' Lord when she meets him, girl, no. Please don't. Although Kathy's response was pretty funny. Yeah. And do a curtsy, too. Oh, Kathy. I hope that she, like, is a permanent housewife next season. I wonder if she'd do it. I'd love it. I would love to know what her tagline would be. I mean, I couldn't even predict it. It's just, it's just funny. Um, and then even her relationship to like Scott and Amelia's, or her response to Scott and Amelia's relationship was so funny. As a mom that has daughters that are in the public eye, it could be worse. I'm thinking like, girl, you would know. Cause everybody knows the whole Paris situation. And if you don't, just go ahead and Google it. You'll find out. So, anyways, I just thought Kathy's response was so awesome when it came to that. She was like, what could be worse? Um, also, I meant to say that um, Dorit and her damn labels are so, and her brand names and stuff, it's just tacky to me. Like, just like um, Garcelle said, you don't even have to question what label or what designer or whatever she's wearing because it's just all over her. I mean, um, I'm sure Louis Vuitton really loves the fact that you're like wearing their stuff, but girl, you don't need to, always have the brand names screaming out. To me, Dory is just so phony and pretentious and just, ugh, I don't know. I'm sure that that's how the majority of it is in Beverly Hills though, so. I guess she fits right in. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah. So they talk about Mazel Tov and Kathy, her definition was so funny. She's like, you know, Merry Christmas, happy birthday. Um, she just uses it, I guess, for everything. And somebody told her um, it actually means congratulations. <laughs> and then they go back into talking about, you know, Scott and Amelia and you know, because everybody's having a reaction to that news. Their time uh, during filming, this like all just had came out. So everybody's reacting. We've all had time to digest it by the time it all aired. Um, but I thought that it was awesome. Garcelle sharing the story about her son, Oliver, and just the struggles he had and where he was at and where he's at now. Um, yeah. I mean, 19 is still so young. I feel like looking back at 19, sure, I didn't make the kind of money that, you know, Amelia has. I wouldn't even know what probably, I probably that is where she's at. Doesn't even know what the heck she's doing. She has all this money and she's young and 
she probably thinks she has it all figured out and she's an adult because she's 19 and that's what 19 year olds think. But I don't even feel like I really figured stuff out until I got to more of my, my mid 20s. And heck, I was married at 23 and had my first child at 24. And I still kind of felt like I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So, you know, 19 is pretty young. I'm just happy that Garcelle shared that story though of her, of her son Oliver and I, you know, hope that he continues doing well with wherever he's at in life and just keeps moving forward and doesn't take any steps backward. And uh, Garcelle tells everybody else she's on Bumble, what? And she's like talking to three guys and stuff and said that she had to verify herself like five different times so people didn't think that she was getting she was trying to catfish somebody i never really thought of that with people that are actually like celebrities that do those kind of sites that they probably go through such a hassle confirming who they are <laughs> so you go girl good luck to you of course, the Crystal and Sutton situation, of course, gets brought up again because of the Crystal and Sutton thing just is not going to bed. And it just keeps going further and further and further and further. Because now, you know, the violation term has been used and that is very offensive to Sutton that she would be accused of violating somebody else because she's just not that kind of a person. Um... And she even said, like, that Kathy came into her room and she she didn't feel violated. And she was, like, on the phone and half naked and all that stuff. Um, then they show Kathy going into her. It, it was so funny seeing her with her fan. And she's like, I'm just going to make sure everybody's okay. Again, she is reality TV gold. And I hope she comes back okay um but you know basically Sutton's like you know I didn't feel that way and when Kathy came into my room I don't know why you know Crystal's making it such a big deal and truthfully I don't know why Crystal is either why is she making it such a big deal um and I, that, I, I'm thinking the same thing that Sutton's thinking, which is that Crystal must not have, like, a lot of lady, like, maybe she didn't go to a lot of sleepovers growing up. I mean, I remember going to camp when I was a kid growing up, and, you know, like, you're in a room with all those other girls, and you just kind of knew not to look over, and you get used to, when somebody's changing, like, to avoid looking at certain areas or you know like isn't that just being a, a woman you let me know so I'm gonna have to say that I would agree with Sutton and think that maybe she just never really went to a lot of sleepovers she doesn't have a lot of like girl girls that are friends that she does things with I don't know I just think that it's like such a less deal than what it's getting made into not a big deal at all, guys. Um, but anyways, it's still getting talked about. So, Sutton's upset, which is understandable, given the situation. And, um, <laughs> she said something about Mr. Poppins, and everybody's all confused. Like, Mr. Poppins? And Kathy, which, ironically with Kathy about Mr. Poppins. Kathy's like Mrs. Poppins. Mary Poppins with her bag. <laughs> Harry's like, I don't know that there's Mr. Poppins. What is she talking about? Funny. Um, but she was just basically trying to say that like Sutton need, or not Sutton. Sutton was saying that Crystal needs to just shut it down. Talking about the whole coat situation and you know, that's all she was trying to get at was like, let's just like 
stop talking about it and making it a big deal. And um, Kathy, you know, then starts speaking up and is trying to be like the voice of reason. And I feel like she did a pretty good job of it. And talking about how she was, she was like, and I was with the English girl. And she was talking about Dorit. <laughs> she thought Dorit was English because of her accent. Well, whatever you want to call it. I mean, is it? I don't know. I don't know. I learned to just tune Dorit out most of the time when she's speaking because I, I just, ugh. Her with all her different accents and ugh, I don't know. She's just not my person. <laughs> no offense, Dorit, and no offense to any Dorit fans out there. I'm not trying to hate hard on the girl. <sighs> okay. Ooh, this is making me look pretty, pretty pasty. I think I'm gonna have to get a different <laughs> foundation for the summer finally. My face is way darker than than this now. But I'm mad at it, hey. <laughs> okay. So that was the end of the seventh episode. And then we're gonna get now we're getting into the eighth episode. The good, the bad, and the ugly leather pants. So the beginning of the episode goes in and it like starts, you just hear piece, bits and pieces of like the conversation of what we're going to hear towards the end of the episode. Because Bravo loves to do that. Um, so then they have Harry Hamlin in the kitchen and, um, <clears throat> you know, him and uh, Lisa are going to have the ladies over. For a, um, a pasta night. Gosh, I could not think of the word pasta. How awful is that? So they're going to have the girl, the ladies over for a uh, pasta night. And so they're, you know, shopping for the fixings because, or the ingredients, not the fixings, but they're shopping for the ingredients for the bolognese that Harry's going to make. Where'd you go, Harry? With your bolognese. It takes forever. My mom makes it. And she said it literally, like, the one that she makes literally takes her all day. So, you go, Harry. I don't have time like that for one sauce. Good grief. Um, so, Kathy, she is the, I swear... She is the girl. She let Erica and Crystal go over there to her house. Like, she's like, you know, I'm not even home. But if you guys want to come over and you guys want to, you know, use my tennis, my tennis court, you go for it. I'm like, okay, Kathy. Can I just say, I don't even know if I like contour right, but now I just can't help but I, I can't do my makeup and not do it. It's just something that all of a sudden I really love to do. So every time I do my makeup now, I contour my face. And like I said, I don't even know if I'm really doing it right. I don't even think I care at this point. It's just fun. So if you think I'm doing it wrong, just so you know, I'm having fun. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyways, Kathy lets them like go to her house and, you know, use her tennis court when she's not even there. What a nice friend. And Crystal, that girl, she is sporty. My goodness, she is. She's out there like a pro. <laughs> um, and Erica, she's like still talking about all this money that she had like even in this episode there she goes she's going again talking about this money that she had and when she doesn't anymore and blah 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 like girl what about these people that had their money taken from them 
people that lost family members, people that lost, nearly lost their life or, you know, like, what about, what about them? Just saying, it's just pretty selfish. But of course she's talking about, you know, um, just how her lifestyle has changed now, you know. She's not living the life that she did when she was with Tom. And I have a feeling that not many people are feeling sorry for her right about now. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. <clears throat> Kathy and her dog, like crashing Kyle's photo shoot was everything. <laughs> and her and her damn bag too. Oh man, she's funny. I really did not expect her to be so funny. Um, so she's talking to Kim still, and I mean, it just seems like these this trio of sisters are just you know, two of them are talking all the time, one of them isn't. It seems like it just all goes all over the place too, you know. Kyle talks to Kathy and Kim doesn't. Kim's talking to Kathy, but not to Kyle. Or Kyle and Kathy and Kim are talking to each other. They ain't talking to Kyle. It's just the craziest thing. But I really hope Kim's doing well, you know. Um, gosh, I always am hoping that. I thought it was great when she left Housewives because I'm like, that lady needs to just focus on herself and healing and, and it's like almost Britney Spears situation in a way, but not really because Britney's like prisoner of her father and the freaking conservatorship. Ugh. It's awful. Um... So Erica's uh, rent for her new house is 9500 a month. And I'm wondering, is she going to be able to afford that here soon? I mean, I don't know. I've been keeping track of what's going on. I've been watching. I've been watching to see what they're asking of her and what if she's, you know, doing it or not doing it and all that stuff. I've been staying up to date because I'm curious. But I wonder if she's going to be able to keep that house of hers when everything's all said and done. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good amount for a house in California because... I've never lived there. I don't know what it's like out there. Or the area she's living in even. So, what do I know? And she's talking about how, like, all this fame, like, you know, like, well, you, I did Chicago and I did this and that. And it's like, you wouldn't even have the fame, though, girl, if it wasn't for Tom funneling that money to you. Not to the extent that it was. I know I've said it before, my other discuss my other discuss sessions about um Beverly Hills, but go watch The Housewife and the Hustler on on Hulu if you haven't already. And then you'll really see what kind of stuff Erica has been up to. I just think it's wrong. It's all wrong gonna say um and like she is and to me I'm like just keep it real like you know that you were getting most of that money because he was funneling it from his law firm into your name I mean it's EJ something EJ Inc or I don't remember but I know that he was doing it <laughs> say about that and I'm not like I don't know if I'm like really buying all the suppression in her marriage I mean we did see those clips that they did show of like Tom being dismissive towards her uh those few times I mean I even remember watching that and think like it was a little cringy for me but 
She seemed just fine with the whole thing. Their whole marriage just seemed odd. Just not very loving. It just seemed kind of cold. And I just didn't get that impression of like that they were truly madly like in love. You know, and I'm not getting the feelings that I get like when I see Kyle and Mauricio on screen together. Um, <sighs> so we see Garcelle at home with her boys while they're doing like the remote learning stuff. And I swear she is like every mom out there that had to do remote schooling with their kids. I felt like I could relate to it. But my kids are younger. But I thought it was funny that she had to <laughs> be quiet and all that stuff. And you're not used to it, you know, you just, not used to that when your kids are doing school work. You're used to being able to just live your life in your house. <laughs> At least that's how I felt. Um, so I felt like I could relate to her with that one. <laughs> and then um, that little Hermes, Hermes bag, Hermes, however you say it. Cause I would not, I mean, even if I had the money, I don't know if I would spend money on that little teeny tiny bag. Especially what they're asking for it. No thanks. And when they're at um, Harry and Lisa's, Kyle just puts her foot in her mouth. She like goes up to Harry and she was like, by the way, like, you know, I had my first kid when I was 19. That could be you guys with, with um, Amelia. Like, no, why would you even say that? Then they talk about basically like their plans for Thanksgiving. Um, you know, with COVID going on and everything. And if you can't relate to anything with the Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills and their lifestyle, you could probably at least relate to them having to be apart from their family last year. Um, I know that like my family get togethers were not what they used to be or what they usually are with everything going on. So that I feel like everybody can relate to was when they were talking about like family members that they weren't able to see. Then again, they go back into talking about, you know, Amelia being with Mr. Disick and Harry's like comparing it when he was with uh, Ursula Andres or Andres. And what I am like just not understanding is how, I mean, you know, with Erica and she was trying to talk about her and Tom. Huge difference when you're in your late to mid to late 20s and you meet somebody that's a significant amount older than you as opposed to being 19. I just feel like there's really no comparison. I mean, Amelia can't even legally get a drink from you know, an adult beverage. Even if she doesn't drink, I'm just saying like, even if she, I'm saying if she wanted to, she can't. I mean, I'm sure she can cause she's Amelia Hamlin and I'm sure that there's ways around it, but I'm still just, she's not, she she's not a whole adult yet, I guess. Real adult, a real adult hood to me is when you can go into a bar, whether you want to drink or not, and you don't get kicked out because you're of age. So, just saying, there's a difference there to me. I thought it was really, really sweet that Harry decided to make a cake for um, Garcelle for her birthday. I thought that was a sweet moment. And you know, maybe her and Nirana can really move forward and bury the hatchet. Um, and maybe Garcelle can ease into that friendship again. Um, I thought that the, the ring was beautiful that some of the ladies got for Garcelle too, I thought. It was just a very thoughtful evening uh, of what they did for her. 
it's time for me to do my final finish, radiant finish. I love finishing spray. Something about it just makes you feel oh, like your setting spray just. Mm. Okay. So I noticed that Sutton cannot fake it with Crystal and she even like says like, you know, I can't be fake. And I totally understand I'm the same way. I can't be around somebody that I really like am not jiving with. And I don't have a poker face and it's awkward and I just can't, I can't be fake with myself, let alone with anybody else. So totally felt like I could relate to Sutton that way. And I also gotta say, I really loved her um, like little leopard jungle dress that she had on. I thought it was cute. And, um, so she's upset and she feels a certain way because of the way that Crystal said that, you know, she felt violated by Sutton. And I totally understand why Sutton would be upset because if that was totally not what she intended and what she meant, I can see why she would be feeling a certain type of way by that word. But I do think she's being a little dramatic, a little emotional about it. Um, I think she's making it like between her, they're both making it on either side a big deal. Crystal's making it a big deal for Sutton ever even like coming in there and all that. And then Sutton's making it a big deal for the way that Crystal has talked to everybody and the reaction that she has given. That's my opinion. Um, Kathy with the hunky dory. Who is hunky dory? Like <laughs> she really was asking that. And the other ladies are sitting there like, what the hell is wrong with her? Why would she even, like, what is she saying? And she's sitting there trying to, like, add it up. Like, who is Hunky Dory? Who could that be? And I thought that was so funny. And, oh, my gosh. She she just makes it so much better. I feel like the season would be so boring without Kathy. Please come back, Kathy. Please come back. Oh, I should have never put my hair up in a snooky because now it looks... Icky. Hmm. I'm gonna have to do it again. I have to just leave it up like that, guys. Okay, we're almost done here. Let me not get distracted. I thought that Garcelle was like super brave because she um, tried to be the raft between Crystal and, and Sutton there. Um, I just, I feel like those two, those two are not gonna be hitting it off too well, you know? And that yeah, looks awful. Uh, okay. I just feel like it's like gonna go down. You can already sense it. We already know it because of what the beginning of the episode started out. And you know, Crystal, she just, instead of saying like that, she's sorry for upsetting Sutton, she's like, I'm sorry that you're upset. Like, girl, you could at least say that, you know, you're sorry for upsetting her or something. I don't know. And then, like, she just jumps into saying that Sutton is jealous of her. Which really sends Sutton off. And she's like, what can I be jealous of? Your ugly leather pants? And then they just show, like, Crystal with her ugly leather pants just standing there. And I found it funny. And that was the end of it. And now we're just going to have to wait until this uh, coming week and to see what goes on between those two. Um, yeah, I'm really liking this season and I know I was really behind, but I'm glad I've caught up. And thank you guys for watching. If you watch this whole thing, really appreciate the support that you're giving me by just viewing this. Um, hopefully like my final makeup look. Here we go. Closer. I had fun. I had fun making it. Just playing around for once. I didn't even have like an idea of what I was going to do. So pretty happy with how it turned out though. Anyways, thanks guys for being here. Thanks for watching me. Thank you for supporting me. And I will see you on the next discussion sesh. Bye.